prepare our hearts for worship. Lord, we are here to worship. We are here to bow down before you. We are here to proclaim that you're our God. You are altogether lovely. You're altogether worthy. You are altogether wonderful, Lord. Lord, as we think, sing these words, let them be the prayer of our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Light of the world. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty that made this heart adore you. Hope of a life spent with you. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me.
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you.
our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, just thank you so much for this day. Just being able to praise you and worship you and being together, Lord, just what a blessing it is, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just pray that we can just worship you today. And that as we worship you, it's not the praise team worshiping the congregation, that is the church worshiping you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we just pray that you'll just be in our hearts and just bless us, bless this time, bless this morning. May we love you so. Thank you so much for me, Jesus Christ. Go ahead and recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, if we could all just have a seat and just welcome each other. Uh, before we go into announcements today, we're actually going to show you guys a video made by the Women's Ministry. Uh, if we could play that right now. really great opportunity to connect with women in our congregation and I love how we're able to encourage one another and challenge and grow in faith um, as a group and this time we use a devotional book as a focus point in our gathering. Uh, one aspect that I really appreciate is having an accountability partner. This gives us a chance to connect with different women from the group each month and we get to know them on a more personal and intimate level. Um, I also enjoy our craft and activity month, for example. In the past, we've done some basic embroidery, we've done some basic calligraphy, basic macrame, um, and usually on the last meeting, we have a guest speaker come from the CAM, and I feel like that's been a really great way for us to stay connected to the Korean congregation and also learn uh, their own spiritual journeys and hear their testimony. I'm really looking forward to seeing how women's group grows throughout the year. That was the women's group. Sorry, that was the introduction for a women's group. And if you're in, in, interested, please go to our Instagram or web page, and there's going to be sign up forms. So please fill it out, and we'll be meeting every Sunday on uh, the third Sunday of every oh, the third Saturday of every month from June to October, and we'll be doing. Um, activities and um, we'll be discussing about the Bible, our days, and also we'll have guest speakers from um, our congregation, but also maybe from uh, KM, Korean Ministry, um, and hear about their testimonies. The first meeting will be held on June 18th, so please sign up. And the second announcement will be Rebuilding Together. So we'll be, Bethel will be partnering with Rebuilding Together's 27th National Rebuilding Event on Saturday, May 21st. Um, we'll be repairing and cleaning and constructing homes for neighbors in need. So if you can volunteer, please reach out to Deacon Hawk.
His contact information will be also on Instagram and also on our webpage. You can go to our webpage and click on announcements to see all these um, information. Um, another announcement would be about Tuesday prayer. We meet um, for a prayer meeting on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And this is held every week. It's a small group where you can share about um, your highs and lows and pray for each other. So please, um, please attend if you're interested. Um, the last announcement will be about finance. If you're get giving tithes to the EM, the English ministry, please use the green envelope provided on top of the offering box. And this will help us to know which tithings are for EM uh, because we separate it from KM. Um, now let's read the Bible verse, the scripture for today. It'll be from Psalm 148. 140, uh, Psalm 148, 1. Hallelujah, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly armies. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all your shining stars. Praise him, highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. He set them in position forever and ever. He gave an order that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, all sea monsters and ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and cloud, stormy wind that ex execute his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creatures that crawl and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, young men as well as young women, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty covers heaven and earth. He has raised up a horn for his people, resulting in praise to all his faithful ones, to the Israelites, to the people close to him. Hallelujah. Amen. Now let's welcome PG for the sermon. Good morning, everybody. Um, it's been a little bit of a, it's been a month or so since I've spoken, so I'm a little bit out of practice. Um, appreciate your prayers this morning. Um, let's all bow our heads and pray before we begin. And as is our custom, or as we like to do, um, I just want you to take a moment and ask God what is in your heart. It sounds like an obvious question that we should be able to already know or perceive, but many times we don't. And so I just invite you to say, Lord, what is in my heart this morning? What am I walking with? What's burdening me? What is giving me joy? Uh, and Lord, I want to give it to you. I want to worship you. Uh, I want to hear you clearly this morning. I want to encounter you. So if you could just take a moment to pray like that. Father, this morning we recognize that you alone are God and that we are not. Uh, we are your creation. We are yours. And this morning we gather together uh, in a way that by ourselves uh, we couldn't. God, you have commanded us to be the church, to be your people. The church not being a building or a structure or a space even. The church being your people. And Lord, as you have poured out your love upon us, as you have showered us with your grace, as you have sacrificed your very self for us, God, I pray that this morning as we gather, we wouldn't let that sacrifice go to waste. That we would live in worship and we would live in proper response to what you've done for us. God, that our hearts and our lives would overflow with thanksgiving and praise God, you also know that as you've created us and as you also know our plight, God, you know that 
our lives, not only individually and here as a church, but as we look at our nation and our world, is filled with challenges and pain and struggle and grief. And Lord, we pray that our church and our ministry and the life that you have given us would give us the courage to face these challenges head on. That we wouldn't shrink away. That we would be able to speak boldly and powerfully. We would be able to bring peace. We would be able to do what you've created us to do. And that we would be able to take your good news, God, wherever we go. And so we pray that as we gather this morning, that as we think about what you have done and your words to us, may we not just walk away from this place with a sense of hope and inspiration and that was a good message or that was a good worship service, but may we leave this place with a sense of calling and purpose and duty to do something in response, to give our lives to you once again. That our Mondays through Saturdays would mean and would be as filled with worship as our Sundays are. We just give everything over to you. We depend on you this morning. Have mercy on your unworthy servant today as I share. We thank you and we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Let me read the passage for us once again. It says, hallelujah, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his heavenly armies. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He set them in position forever and ever. He gave an order that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. All sea monsters and ocean depths. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy wind that executes his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creatures that crawl and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all judges of the earth, young men as well as young women, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His majesty covers heaven and earth. He has raised up a horn for his people, resulting in praise to all his faithful ones, to the Israelites, the people close to him. Hallelujah. Can everyone say hallelujah together? This is uh, Andrew Ilnicki and Stephen Lim. And they have a show on BuzzFeed called Worth It. It's currently showing on YouTube and Hulu together with their producer, Adam Bianchi. They've created a really neat short show. And the whole premise of Worth It is that Andrew and Stephen try the same kinds of foods at several places uh, at different price points to see which one is indeed worth it. And so over the course of several seasons, they've tried everything from $4 rice to $52 rice, $20 whole chicken versus $78 whole chicken. Uh, they've done a $7 bowl of pho versus a $68 dollar bowl of pho. And they're primarily based out of Los Angeles and have traveled all over the world and country to film these episodes. And they've also done a lot of uh, Korean food. So they've tested $24 Korean barbecue versus $300, $346 Korean barbecue. And they've also done $13 Korean soup versus $88 Korean soup um, at Major Domo in Los Angeles. And so the show is pretty cool in that sense, right? They go around wherever and then they just hit different price points, which one is worth it. And this morning, Psalm 148 is a psalm of worship, praise. In church, like we throw a lot of words around and Sometimes we kind of know what they mean. Sometimes we don't. We have a general idea. Like worship and praise is one of those words. Like worship is not just singing. Um, worship is an act of saying something is worth it. Uh, worship can be song. So a lot of times the brothers and sisters that are sharing in front of us in the mornings, they're called the worship team or praise team. It's oftentimes synonymous but this morning, what I wanted to impress upon us 
is that worship is so much more than just song. Worship is so much more than just our voices or our instruments or our favorite hymns. And for those of us that music is a huge part of what we, our, our faith, I think we can all understand that it touches a part of our heart and our life and our soul in a very, very special way. And I don't want to take that away. And so for those of us that connect to the Lord in, on that level, I mean, you are encountering God. That's the other part. Worship requires an encounter with God. And so praise music is oftentimes something that many, many people think of as worship. Rightly so. But this morning, I also wanted to say that worship is much more than just singing and praise. So in this psalm, as, as Pastor I read for us this morning, Psalm 148, uh, there are 150 psalms, by far the largest book in the Bible. And there are so many different kinds of themes that are woven in and out. But this type of psalm uh, just usually has two parts to it. It's a summons, as many writers and commentators note. It's a summons to praise. It's saying, come on, people, let's praise. Let's worship. Let's give God his due because he has won for us salvation because he has given himself for us, his steadfast love, his faithfulness endures through all generations. The blessings that he has given us over and over and over again, thinking about that, recounting that, ends up in giving God worship and praise. That's how summons. That's, that's one part. The second part is looking at a reason or a basis for why we do that. And that basis is God. The reason why we worship, the purpose of worship is God, is, is knowing him, is encountering him, is experiencing him. And when we do that, I think everything changes. And this is the way that I want to kind of preface it. And I don't want to reduce an encounter of God to something like a, like a warm, tender-hearted moment. But Oftentimes when I'm in a bad mood, and I know that I've had this conversation with some of us before, oftentimes when I'm in a bad mood or when I'm looking for, I'm feeling a little down, like I'll do what anybody else does and I'll just kind of scroll through social media. <laughs> when I scroll through social media, oftentimes I'll come across these inspirational videos and then I'll have a good cry. Uh, and oftentimes these videos tend to be like reunions like long lost reunions of parents and children that haven't seen each other for a long time. I saw one where uh, a player on the Florida State basketball team this past year for senior night, uh, he's from the Dominican Republic, and uh, they flew in his mother for senior night, and just seeing him like reduced to tears, seeing his mother, being so grateful at the opportunity to play basketball, but also to celebrate that last moment with his mom is just so special. And it's like something that, it's not just, something wrong with me, but it's also just something that when you look at it, it's a little, little, little tiny reminder of like how beautiful our lives are, like how special relationships can be, how transcendent our God is. If you've spent any amount of time in church, I'm sure you've heard worship is God's due. We should worship God because he's worthy. He's worth it. 100% agree. I have nothing to add to that, nothing to take away from that. But if I were to put that another way, I would ask us to think about recently moments or times that we have felt something that is greater than ourselves. Maybe it's an encounter with the Almighty. Maybe it's an encounter in nature on a hike. Maybe it's a relationship or a conversation that you've had. Maybe it's the birth of a child. Maybe it's a loss of a loved one. When was the last time that you perhaps cried? When was the last time that perhaps you felt like life was bigger than just you? That you were not in control? And those feelings and emotions of joy, sadness, grief, fear. I mean, those are all things that allow us to remember that we are not in control of our lives, that life is bigger than us, and that this life is not unknowable, 
And even though it is unpredictable, that the one who has created us is not far off. The one who created us, in fact, is our Father. And if we are truly to be worshipers, it requires an encounter with this transcendent, almighty God in a way that we are not in control, in a way that reduces us perhaps to tears, perhaps to falling on our faces and saying, Lord, you are worthy. Thank you so much for loving me, for giving me life, for blessing me with what you have. You have. Father, this pain that I'm going through is difficult, but I'm not alone. Worship requires an encounter with the Almighty. Worship requires an encounter with the Almighty where we are not in control. And that's what this psalm is talking about. If you look, it's 10 times that it's mentioned. Praise, praise, praise. Worship, worship, worship. And when you're looking at it, it's like worship and praise from all corners of creation. It's the angels, it's the heavenly armies, it's uh, young people as well as old people, it's sea monsters. So it's like anything and everyone imaginable is called to worship. It's called to give God his praise and his due. And they're called to come face to face with the Almighty. And in their lives, not just through music and song, but it's constantly saying, Lord, you are worth it. To not worship God is to deny a part of our identity. To not worship God is to not live fully our story or the lives that he has given us. So I want to ask you this morning, in your worship of God, have we just reduced it to coming out on Sundays once a week or listening to praise music, which is all great, but are we missing out on so much more? Do we realize that true worship is an encounter with God? And any time you have an encounter with God, even in your pain, even in your grief, what happens is in worship, we are truly seen and heard. In worship, we are truly vulnerable before God. And in that moment, whether it's a moment of joy or unspeakable happiness or the opposite, we are seen. We are exposed before God. And what we find is that our loving Father is right there with us. When's the last time that we've really worshipped like that? When's the last time that we've given our whole lives, and not just singing out to the top of our lungs, but everything in our lives, the way that we speak, the way that we act. I'm going to read off a list. And these are just like things I just like spitballed. And, and this is what I thought of when worship. We worship God by living peaceably with one another. We worship God by seeking justice and fighting for the rights of those who cannot fight for themselves. We worship God by taking care of his creation and the world around us, not exploiting and misusing our natural resources, but being good stewards of what God has entrusted to us. We worship God when we forgive one another and ask for forgiveness from each other. We worship God when we serve others and sacrifice our time and energy for his kingdom. We worship God when we grieve and mourn with those who have lost. We worship God when we allow others to see us and know us rather than just being anonymous at church. Again, it's not an exhaustive list. All things that we do, our whole lives can be worshiped our sports, our hobbies, our activities. And I want to challenge us as a community to think of praise and worship, not just as something we do once a week when we sing with our voices, but everything in our lives as giving worship to God. Everything in our lives, giving praise to him or not giving praise to him. Everything in our lives can be an encounter with the Almighty. This is what Bobby Morris says. And perhaps most powerfully implicit, this psalm, Psalm 148, declares that praise necessarily involves gathering. 
All the Hebrew imperatives to praise are in the plural. Praise may not be impossible as an individual, but it reaches an apex otherwise beyond achievement and experience in the gathered worshiping community. So Bobby Moore says it. We have to gather in order to worship. We have to gather in order to praise. And it is a great blessing that our gatherings here at this church are not just limited to Sundays. But that act of gathering, that act of coming together is not easy. Because us, like any other church, us, like any other organization, once you start gathering, once you start developing a culture, once you start meeting together, inherently, perhaps, the nature of people, we start to think and we start to perceive and we start to look at others and think who's in and who's out. Who belongs and who doesn't. And even churches today are wrestling with this, realizing that in the past, we haven't done, not just Bethel, but churches all over the country, all over the world, haven't done a great job of recognizing, of being intentional, of welcoming people as Christ welcomed us. And so these are questions that are really floating around right now, right here. Who's in, who's out? As many of you know, this month is Asian American Pacific Islanders Heritage Month, where we celebrate the achievements of those who come from an Asian American heritage. It's not just Chinese, it's not just Japanese, it's Korean, it's Lao, it's Cambodian, it's Indian, it's so many, I mean, it's a huge community and a group of people to celebrate. But that's our our month. But... For us here, I want us to think about, like, what does it mean to be Korean? Like, what does it mean to be Asian? Who can celebrate this month? And these questions of identity are are things that I'm sure, like, we've probably all wrestled with or thought about a little bit. You know, I don't know if, like, a a bowl cut is, like, a, a prerequisite for... You know, if you've had a bowl cut, you can say that, you know, I'm Asian American. And most of us guys here in this room of a certain age, that's just the cut that we all had. And here's mine. But Asian Americanness is much more than just shared experiences. For those of us who are adopted that maybe look Asian American but have no, perhaps, ability to speak the language or whatnot, this month is still for you. For those of us who perhaps are from a first generation from Korea or from Japan or from somewhere else, and we're still acclimating to this country, this month is for you. What I'm trying to say is that these questions of identity, of who's in, who's out, they're answered in Psalm 148. If you remember what I said in the beginning, these 10 imperatives to praise the Lord, and if you look in your Bibles right now this morning at Psalm 148, where is the praise coming from? It's not just from one place. It's not just from one location. It's not just from one group of people or one animal group. It's from everywhere. It's from the young people, the old people. It's from the sea monsters. Again, you're probably wondering like I am, like what does that mean? That God wants praise from sea monsters. See, the thing is in Psalm 148, you have praise and you have the call to worship from every single place. Which means that every single group is instructed and welcomed to worship God and invited to worship God. And for us as Asian Americans here this morning, I can't share this, what I'm saying. I can't share this message without, again, recognizing that while we are celebrating the achievements and the the, the heights that we have gone to and, and, and risen to in ways that I couldn't have imagined in academics and business and society and technology, whatever. But I also recognize that we are in the midst of tremendous grief and heartache. We're reminded of the ongoing violence against the Asian American community, against the black community, against other communities of color. Within this past month, we know that Delivery workers have been shot and killed in Queens, in Brooklyn, in New York. We have a 70-year-old Asian elderly man who was stabbed to death in South LA not too long ago. We have a Cambodian woman who was attacked in San Leandro, California. 
And we know that this past week, most recently, uh, the shootings that have occurred in the Dallas area. And this is what it reads. The Dallas gunman has targeted three Asian-owned businesses. There were shootings on April 2nd, May 10th, and on Wednesday, May 11th, where three Korean women were shot. It was the same suspect in a maroon-colored van. They were not robberies. The suspect is not yet caught. In a little over a month, there have been three targeted shootings in Dallas. There is a pattern, and the gunman on the loose feels more emboldened to murder Asians and Asian Americans who are at work and going about their lives. We remember also last year, around this time, the Atlanta spa shootings that took place. So we have that going on. We have a shooting yesterday that occurred, a white supremacist in Buffalo shooting a grocery store of predominantly black Americans. We have the war in Ukraine. We have the Israel, Israeli military's murder of Shirin Abu Akleh. We have so much going on this morning that speaks and that really is reflected upon in Psalm 148. Because whether it's in our churches or our communities or our nation or our world, very, very loudly and powerfully, the message is being sent. This is who belongs and this is who doesn't. This is who is in and this is who is out. And for us as a church, in order to worship God fully, in order to, in order to repent and not be like the people in Isaiah 29, we have to say God ordains worship from all people. That every single one of his creation is valuable and precious in his sight. And that we worship when we fight and we speak up and we acknowledge what is going on. Instead of hiding and just saying, oh, this is not what Christians do. We should just think about our Christian identity. Of course we should. But then why would, did God create us to be Asian, black, Colombian, Ukrainian. Why did God create us to be what he created us to be then? If we were all supposed to just forget our identities and just live as some kind of amorphous Christian nation. Remember what I said. A true worship experience requires an encounter with God. And when you truly encounter God, it means you are seen and you are heard. Sometimes in your joy, but also sometimes in your grief. And this morning, we are not only celebrating, but we are, our hearts are heavy. We don't have words. Right? We lament together. We grieve together. We gather together to pray and to say, Lord, how long, oh Lord, will you delay? How long until your mercy and your justice comes? How long till you make all that is wrong right again? How long, O oh Lord? And Father, may we never, ever, ever be people that just worship you with our lips, but our hearts are far from you. May we never, ever be people that just worship you and reduce worship to singing songs and feeling good on Sundays and then the rest of our lives are lived in another way where we ignore these things. The Lord said, these people approach me with their speeches to honor me with lip service, yet their hearts are far from me. And human rules direct their worship of me. Therefore, I will again confound these people with wonder after wonder. The wisdom of their wise will vanish and the perception of their perceptive will be hidden. This is what it says, John 4. But an hour is coming. And is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes, the Father wants such people to worship him. God is looking for true worshipers. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So what I wanted to say to us this morning is this. I am grateful every um, week that I, I come and I see. Uh, I am grateful, especially over the last month or so, uh, just your prayers and support uh, for my family. Um, as many of you have seen on social media, we are so blessed to have welcomed Haven into our family. Uh, and that wouldn't have been possible without you and your prayers and your love, your meals, 
your kindness. Uh, and as some of you know also, my father-in-law was uh, hospitalized several days ago, and, and he's on the mend, and your prayers just mean so much there too. But this part of being a beloved community is, is not just reserved for me. I, I hope it's not just reserved for me because I'm the pastor. I hope every single one of us here feel that same way as we walk through life together. Whether we are single, whether we are married, whether we have family, whether we are joyful, whether we're grieving, that every single one of us here, and those of us who are tuning in, that we can come to this place and be seen and heard. We can come to this place and be prayed for. We can come to this place and share what we're going through, to laugh together. We can share our burdens and, and, and grieve together. And that is what a community of God looks like. That's true worship. And I hope that this last part of what I'm sharing this morning is not just, it just doesn't reduce everything to just a couple of these points. But I want to invite you, I want to encourage you. If you're really serious about worship, that it cannot just be a Sunday experience, it cannot just be songs, and it cannot just be something that's comfortable to us, but it has to be done in a way that encounters the living God and it really does something together. And I know that it's not easy when you gather a group of people together. We are all in need of grace. We're all fallen. But I thought this was very apropos. Beth Moore, the speaker, pastor, writer, she shared this past week that she taught a Bible study at her church several nights ago. And a few minutes before class, she said, an 11-year-old girl came up to her and introduced herself to Beth and said, may I be your assistant tonight? I came with my mom. You mean a lot to us. And Beth shares that she was about to cry, but she put her to work. She gathered herself and she put this 11-year-old girl to work and the girl helped her set up. And she writes, I was so moved by it. I want these kids to know Christ, to know that Christ has a place for them, purpose for them, dignity for them. They don't have to wait till they've grown to serve him, to come to love him. I began serving when I was 12 at VBS, and I'm, sure, I'm not sure it didn't save my life. This 11-year-old girl continued to assist Beth from then on, passing out handouts, greeting at the door, whatever was asked. If an 11-year-old girl can do that, I wonder, what about us? What about us? And these are ways that I want to invite you to get connected, invite you to worship. And I know it's like, again, I'm running the risk of being terribly, like, reductionistic and, like, terribly just, you know, boiling it down to, like, these are the things that you can do. But these are the things that you can do. Because, believe it or not, not just the 70 or 80 so people here, but our world, our families, everywhere out there is looking for genuine God, connection, transcendence, meeting the Almighty. They're looking for worship. And we have a leadership team of 12, and I'm telling you right now that we can't do it all. And I don't know if this has been something that God has been gnawing at your heart or placing on your heart. And maybe you've just been ignoring him. But today is the day. This is the opportunity. And I'm just going to put these out there. There's so much more. But just to sum, right? Filling out a connect card. I saw somebody doing it this morning. Thank you. Best way for us to get in contact with you, to pray for you. And again, this may not just be, you know, I know that there's a fear and a hesitation. Man, if I fill this out, they're going to contact me. They're going to put me to work. They're going to ask me to do stuff. I promise you, we won't for a little bit. Maybe for a little while. But do so. Because more than anything, if you know myself and our team, the number one thing we want to do is just pray for you. To pray with you. To listen to you. So fill out a card. That's the best way to connect. All right, secondly, welcome to Bethel meetings. Every last week of the month, Pastor I, Pastor Jonathan, myself, we take some time to get to know newcomers if they're interested, and more than finding out about our church and our history, we just want to know about you. Again, another opportunity to connect. This is a chance for you to, to worship, to come a little bit closer. Right, membership class, we've had uh, this time around, today is our third of four meetings. 
We have three people going through it together. It's such a blessing. Several months ago, we had eight people. And you can even ask, like, why, you know, what's up with all of the membership? Why is it a commit? Why is there so much commitment? I'm a little bit hesitant. That's fine. Definitely fair questions. And the only answer that I can give is if you look at the Old and the New Testaments, that the people that God calls are not just people that are fair weather fans. They're not just people that are coming, they come and go as they choose. There is a higher calling that they're called to. True disciples are followers that follow Christ when it's easy, but also when it's difficult. And I know that that's challenging for many of us. And I recognize and I name, myself included, that church and religious institutions have done a very poor job of caring for our own at times. And so we all come with a lot of baggage. And so I, come up, I, I stand up here as a pastor saying, I too am with you, having been hurt by a church, but I firmly see that the Old Testament and the New Testament, church and the people of God is where God calls us to gather. No way around that. And that's what we believe and we want to follow what God has instructed us to do. And so that's another opportunity. Announcements. Rather than every week just, oh, yeah, it's going on. Rebuilding together, this is an opportunity to partner with not only Habitat for Humanity, but our KM that usually does this, and we've been participating over the last several years uh, pre-COVID. But this Saturday, apologies that it was just last minute. This is an opportunity to sign up. Sign up, right? Small group gathering. If you're good with tools, come out. If you're not good with tools, come out. I'm very not good with anything like that, but I go, and I usually end up with paint in my hair and, and stuff like that, but it's, it's good. Right? It's connection, it's worship, it's meeting together, it's gathering together. June 11th, right? mark that on your calendars. Our whole church, summer kickoff. Pray for good weather, water slides, food trucks, stuff here, 12 to 4. That's a great opportunity to connect. Do you have talents or abilities? Availability being the greatest ability. I don't know if you noticed, but there are like three or four consistent KM uh, deacons uh, that help with parking. That's, you know, not like the most fun job. Like that's not their like day job during the week. But they come out and they serve because that's, you know. And again, just being available and saying, hey, I want to I wanna do something. Can I serve in this way? That's always a need. And then weekly prayer meetings. And just so you think that, just so you, you know, just so it's not like I'm crazy here talking about connection and worship and all these things. Let me just read this little excerpt and, and I'm, I'll just zip through it. But um, I'll just read it and then, you know, hopefully you'll see the connection. It says, since last summer, a startup in beta mode has been soliciting volunteers to take part in a 55-minute session called Gathers, where strangers discuss their deepest hopes and fears. The fledgling company Peoplehood is led by entrepreneurs Elizabeth Cutler and Julie Rice, who combine sweat and spirituality in their last venture, the high-end fitness chain SoulCycle. So, so many of us have heard of SoulCycle before, but they have a new venture. So far, nearly 1,000 people have taken part. Ms. Cutler and Ms. Rice said, on a recent night, I was one of about 20 volunteers who logged on to a remote session moderated by Shamika Jones, an actress, dancer, and model who in peoplehood speak is a super connector. Wearing a sweatshirt with peoplehood across the front, Ms. Jones had an infectiously upbeat presence. After leading us through a series of breathing exercises, she introduced the topic of the day, uncertainty. Before the discussion got underway, she set the ground rules. If you are not the person speaking, you're supposed to listen actively without interrupting. To express support for a speaker, you are to use one of three responses, snapping, placing your hands over your heart, or raising your hands, palms facing the screen. Ms. Jones then gave us a discussion prompt, but how am I really feeling is blank. To fill in the blank, group members expressed their anxieties about the war in Ukraine, the lingering effects of the pandemic, and the return to a pre-2020 work setup. During this portion of the gather, which took about 20 minutes. I was trying to be a good peoplehood person. I snapped, I placed my hands over my heart. At one point while trying to juggle active listening and coming up with the correct response, I accidentally did jazz hands. Right. 
Next, we were separated into pairs. Each person was instructed to speak for three minutes uninterrupted. The prompt this time, what keeps you up at night? Once we had all shared our 3 a.m. anxieties with a stranger, we were given, each given a new partner for another prompt. Name something you're looking forward to. Six minutes later, we returned to the full group to share a reflection. Then we did some light stretching to the strains of soothing music. Class dismissed. I mean, good for them, right? These soul cycle founders, they found a way to monetize connection. And, you know, God, that's not what we're doing here. But, I mean, like, to me, like, this is amazing, right? They're, like, connecting people, uh, honestly, to make a buck, but they're doing it in a way that is filling this need. And we as a church, when I look out at all of us, I know that we can do it. And again, it, it's going to take more than just a group of, of several leaders, but everybody. And with our talents and our abilities, I mean, really, it's, it's endless. And this is straight from the Apostle Paul. And I'll end with this. How then can they call on him they have not believed in? And how can they believe without hearing about him? And how can they hear without a preacher? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Christ has given us the ultimate good news. He has given his life for us. He has given us the ultimate reason to worship him. He has seen us and he has sacrificed his very being for us. And he calls us to live in response and in gratitude. And I, and I again, no like guilt trip, no like burden or anything like that. This morning as we just go to prayer, as we worship, as we close, I just want you to think through what we shared this morning. And again, I, I'm probably saying this as much to myself as I am to you. But if we are really serious about being the church that God wants us to be, to be worshipers in spirit and in truth, to speak out against injustice, to stand with those who are grieving. It's going to take a whole lot more than just a few select group of leaders. It's going to take everybody together. And I invite you, I invite you, as our Lord invites you this morning. Let's pray together. Father, we just ask that whatever spirit you want to do in our hearts and whatever you have been doing in our hearts, Lord, God, just continue to do that work in our lives. Father, just give us the courage to respond this morning. Not to my voice, not to my preaching or prompting or anything like that, but just to you, Lord Jesus. Whatever it might be, whether it's one of the suggestions that were thrown out or whether it's just something else that you've been impressing upon our hearts already. You've been asking us to worship. God, please help us to respond to you. Thank you, Father God, for this opportunity to gather together and to realize that, Lord, we are seen and heard by the Almighty who has given his son for us. And now that we have your grace and your love, God, may we give our lives for you and for others. Father, you know, God, that our hearts are heavy this morning with so much that has been going on, nowhere to turn. But we ask and pray, Father God, that in the midst of our grief and our sorrow, in the midst of our confusion and our worry, that you would help us to cry out to you and to connect together with one another in spirit and in truth. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. If we could all rise and respond with this last song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But now I'm found Was blind But now I see T'was grace that 
Chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending going to invite us to close our eyes. I'm going to ask us to lift our hands like this. And before I give the benediction, I'm just going to ask us to pray for somebody. Uh, Not yourself. It could be somebody here. It could be somebody in your family. It could be somebody, co-worker, somebody you know that needs prayer. And that's the best way that I know that we can worship and stand together. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us on the cross, and the love of our God the Father, who sent his one and only, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, Be with us all as we now desire to worship in spirit and in truth. Be with us all as we now go out into this world in need of courage and strength. May the power of God, the courage of God fill us to worship him, not only in our worship and our praise and our songs, but in our lives, our decisions, our choices, our connections, in ways that encounter the true and living God and that invite others to do the same now and forevermore. Amen. 